Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. Well, that is weird. Okay. I had really good color on the bottom, and then, I don't know. Oh, uh, maybe it is how it's tilted. No, it's not. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, my phone has decided that it has to be flipped over to, I don't know. Okay, that's weird. Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing this evening? Sorry, I am so late. Um, I try to be here on time. I have been working today and just uh, didn't get a chance to get much accomplished, like hair-wise, as you can tell. But hey, I'm here. I'm here and I have my Fall for Jesus t-shirt on because in my mind it's fall. I don't know. I know summer is coming. Anyway, tonight I want to talk to you about unrepentant sin. And the good news is there's a cure for unrepentant sin. And it is forgiveness through Jesus. And so when God woke me up with this thought, unrepentant sin, I thought, well, what am I going to do with this? Like, unrepentant sin. There is nothing encouraging about un being called out for your unrepentant sin. Uh, but the encouragement is that we don't have to stay there. We can ask for forgiveness and we can turn the other way. Alright, this is bugging me. I don't know why this is like this tonight. Okay. Oh well. It, I guess it is what it is tonight. It's like the color is just way off. And it wasn't. It wasn't early. I look like a redhead. And I do not have red hair. I have. Well, that one cleared up. The other one. Oh, well. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to read. Well, actually, I didn't write very much. And so... I don't even have to try to make it fit in because I didn't have time to write much. Okay, so let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and start off in prayer. God, we just thank you and uh, we are so blessed to be your children. Thank you, God, that we don't have to live in our unrepentant sin, that there is forgiveness through Jesus. And all we have to do is reach out our hand and ask for it. It doesn't cost us anything. We don't have to leave our homes to get it. It is available 24-7. So thank you, God, for that, first of all. Thank you that you are the great Jehovah and you are the great I Am. You are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our healer. God, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty, but yet you are loving and kind and compassionate and long-suffering towards us God we just thank you we thank you for loving us we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength God we lift up the loss to you we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved God, we just pray for the prodigals to repent and to return and to have their relationship restored. God, we pray for all the crises, <laughs> all the crises and all the, <laughs> all the other things, the tragedies that are going on, God, right now. Just, uh, we just pray for these people. We just pray that you would be with them, God. God, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would heal them. That you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God. That you would, uh, that you would be a presence for them in the, in the loss of their family or their friend. God, we just pray that they would know where their family member is, where their friend is. And know that they are with you forever. 
God, we just uh, pray for the sick. We just, I just lift up Josie to you and her co-worker Maria and uh, Mike and her sister. God, I'm, I'm not sure which one. We just lift them up to you, God, and pray that you would heal their bodies. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so that didn't do anything to improve my bangs the way they look. Let me skip back a little bit. There we go. All right, I'll make sure I don't have my... I worked on two different computers, and like during the day I was I had the thing muted because when I would punch on something it would ding that bell and I got tired of listening to the bell so I turned the sound off. This, this is a different computer. This is my computer. And so I can't get things the way they usually are. Okay. So let's talk about unrepentant sin. Let's get our Bibles out. And let's read some scripture. So what is unrepentant sin? Well, it's sin that you're stuck in. It's sin that you cannot you cannot get away from. It's sin that kind of maybe sometimes has become a lifestyle. Well, any sin is an abomination to God. So we need to get out of it. So how do we get out of it? Well, a lot of times it requires prayer. You know, we have to pray for God to give us the strength to be able to withstand the temptation of that sin, whatever it is. There are so many sins. Uh, there are sins that um, we commit, like sins of omission that we don't even really see as a sin, but God does. So we need to, we need to ask forgiveness for our sins. So Ephesians 2 was my um, this was my scripture for today in a U version and I kind of felt like it fit with what God was telling me about unrepentant sin and uh, I think it's really good and we're going to read this and then we'll read a couple of scriptures about unrepentant sin and then we'll read um, maybe two or three about forgiveness. Because forgiveness is the answer. You go and you ask for forgiveness and you turn from that sin. Okay, well, so this is what Ephesians 2 said. Says. It says. It says it all the time. It said it this morning to me, though. Oh, this has been charging all day and it has 30% charge. That's kind of crazy. Okay, so let's go ahead and read. My music is not set up because I cleaned my desk off today because I got tired of looking at it. I had a stack of papers and I got rid of them. I've had a pretty action-packed day. I made the best pork chops that I think I have ever made. But I cooked them for like five hours and just real slow with uh, some water and butter. Oh, they're so good. Some seasonings. And I uh, made some potatoes today. And so I cooked all those while I came in here and worked. Okay, I'll get that turned on in a minute. We'll go ahead and read. And you hath quickened, and, and you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past she walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Because when we are in sin, when we are in unrepentant sin, we are children of disobedience. We are not being obedient to God because that is not what God wants for us at all. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, 
and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God who but God but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, hath quickened us together. Oh, I've got to turn my sorry. Oh, which one is mine? I unplugged my computer today. I have all these computer cords. All right, that's not it. Not it. I think this is it. I just hope it's plugged in. Let go. Oh my. Oh. Oh, I think it goes on this side. All right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I would have lost my other camera. Hey, it lightened up my other camera and it made that one darker. Okay, this is so strange. Okay, well back to, back to scripture. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were yet dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not that, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created, that was my scripture, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the common wealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fifty frame, fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for the habitation of God through the Spirit. So we are, we are, we were, in our sins but through Jesus we have been sanctified we are God's workmanship that he created through Christ Jesus that he ordained that we would be his workmanship and uh, we are saved by grace only we it is not anything that we do so when we have unrepentant sin 
we need to go to Jesus. We need to go to Jesus. We need to ask for forgiveness. Because we need forgiveness so that we can have that separation from God uh, reconciled. We need that reconciliation. So forgiveness is the key to unrepentant sin. Forgiveness, grace. And what we get in return, in reward, to me is so much better than that sin. Like, I don't have to have that sin. I don't have to have that because I would rather have this reward. I would rather be obedient to God. Am I perfect? No, I absolutely am not. Will not ever be perfect until I leave this place. Then I'll get my perfected body. But until then, I will never be perfect. But that doesn't mean that we just go, well, I am... I am weak and I just I can't get out of this sin because we can always we can always always through Jesus not ourselves through the strength of Jesus we can always break loose of that sin which is bondage it is bondage there is nothing good about it it is bondage and it may be fun for a while but I don't know whether God gave me this or whether I just thought of this earlier today. But it's like, sin is like, and I, I love cats, so I'm not saying anything bad about cats. But sin is like that little tiny kitten that is so precious. Oh, you just want to, oh, you want to spend so much time with that little tiny kitten. Well, what if that tiny kitten was really a tiger? And so sooner or later that tiny kitten is going to grow into something that wants to devour you because that's its nature that's the sin nature it will sin is so precious and so wonderful at first but it will ruin your life so we so need to get away from it we need to get away from it so badly. So let's see what else the scriptures say. Okay. How about Second Corinthians seven ten? No, I didn't look at these today. Like I said, I didn't have much time. I nearly did not do this at all. Because I've been in front of my computer all day. Okay, so 2 Corinthians 7.10 says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you. Not wrought, not R O T, W R O G H T. What clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves. To be clear in this matter. Um, skipping back up to nine, because now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. Like we're so we feel so bad about the sin that we want to repent. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. So we feel so bad about this sin. We feel so uh, broken, so helpless against this sin that it causes us sorrow and that's what makes us want to repent. We want to repent. We want to be, we want to be rid of that. We want to be rid of it. Okay.
Okay, here's a good one. Romans 6, 1 through 23. It's a long one. It's a long one. So back this way. 6, 1 through, 1 through 23. You can't talk. Okay, I may or may not read all of it. I'm looking for my fan. It's a little warm in here tonight. Oh, this computer has a thing over here too. The other computer I was using, it only has like two, two USB ports. And I need several because I'm usually charging my phone. I'm usually doing several things my USBs. Okay, so Romans 6. Romans 6, 1 through 23 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ we raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Ye kn know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form, that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, so I think that Romans 6 said this the very best. Because it talked about that once we are saved, we are not supposed to live in sin. We are to walk in righteousness. We are to seek obedience. Are we perfect? No, we're not. But we are to strive to be more and more like Jesus every day. 
And so if Jesus is perfect, we are to strive to be better and better and more like him every day. And so I think Romans 6 wins in this about unrepentant sin. I think Romans 6 won. Okay, so let's let's talk about forgiveness now, which is on the other side of my sheet. Forgiveness. Because forgiveness is the cure for unrepentant sin. Uh uh, leave that alone, Seth. Leave that alone. I don't want that knocked over. Stop it. It's not mine. Leave it alone. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, this is mostly about forgiving one another, which is good too. I'm not saying that it's not. Um... Well, let's read Mark eleven twenty five. I have a visitor. I may have to go. I'll put something on for two hours, and I know I haven't been in here for two hours. Mark eleven twenty five. I need a sign to put on my door. Um, recording, please go away. Okay, 11.25. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So if we want to be forgiven, I'm sorry, my nose itches. So if we want to be forgiven, we must forgive others. Let's see if we can find a couple more. Okay, Colossians 3.13 says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So forgiveness is asking for forgiveness, making sure that we don't have anything against anybody else, and asking for forgiveness is the cure for unrepentant sin. So I want to read, I didn't, I um, I love the song Forgiven by David Crowder and so I, I shared it this afternoon. Even after I already put on there the title of this lesson, I shared this. Um, this morning, the two words on my mind were unrepentant sin. So that's, that's what I woke up with. I woke up with the thought of unrepentant sin. And I think maybe I dreamed of this kitten that grew into a tiger. Or maybe I thought about that later. I'm not sure. But um, I felt like that was a good example of sin. It's so good at first, and it's just so comfortable, and you just want to spend so much time with it. But then it grows and grows and grows, and it starts taking over your life. And before long, your life revolves around that sin. Because sin is not freedom. It is bondage. It is bondage by Satan. And uh, 
then you just keep feeding your thoughts, your mm. time, everything to that sin, and it just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And before long, it's a ferocious tiger, and it consumes your thoughts, it consumes your your um, your wants, it consumes everything. It starts taking over your life, and you start living your life to please that sin. And we just have to ask for forgiveness. And we just have to repent. We have to ask for forgiveness and repent. So this is what I wrote this morning. Um, I've had a very busy day and have not, have not had a chance to figure out what the message was. Until I thought about this song and message by Crowder. It's called Forgiveness. So this is the message. Forgiveness is the cure for unrepentant sin. Sin is a disease, and Jesus is the only cure. Blatant, unrepentant sin and blasphemy against God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is destroying our world. Check your heart. Do you have sin that you have not repented of? Ask Jesus to forgive you and turn away from it. It is not worth it. So I checked my heart this morning and asked for forgiveness. Is Jesus your Savior? If not, call upon His name and be saved now. Have you strayed away from your relationship with Him? Ask for forgiveness and return to the relationship. And that's that's all the time I had to put on that. And I was even like nearly 15 minutes late. So, I want to talk to you about my quiet time this morning. Uh, it was actually pretty long for kind of got a late start this morning I said good morning God good morning child I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings and new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus a new day to get things done child thank you God for a new day of mercies and blessings new opportunities to share share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for a new day to get things done. Child, many things are taking place, good, good and bad, at a rapid speed. It is difficult for you to keep up with, but I see it all and hear it all. Good and evil are in massive battles all over the world. Many things must take place place so be patient in the way child my timing is always perfect focus on sharing my truths in the gospel of Jesus these other things are under my control and and will work out to accomplish my plans and purposes for your country and all over the world soon all will be revealed to you revealed and you will understand Everyone will see the truth and be disgusted by it. Child, focus on me I do, and do not focus on all of what is going on today. Do your work and get things done. Listen while you work. Trust me and my righteous followers to take care of all of what you see and hear. Be ready for victorious news. Soon you are seeing some of the great awakening when many come to Jesus and many return also. People will choose sides. The rapture and reunion will follow in the tribulation. All is unfolding according to my plans and purposes, child. So walk in faith, child, and walk in righteousness. Much sin needs to be repented of. My children need to step away from their sins against me. Their unrepentant sin. These are the words I gave you this morning. Focus on what I mean about it. And I just figured it out while I go. Okay, God, I see what you are saying clearly. I will do what you ask. Help me to be able to accomplish my job quickly and help it to all fall into place. 
like only you can do. Thank you for meeting me today, God, in every day. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Be patient in the wait. My timing is perfect always. The reunion is soon to be ready, child. Keep your focus on me and my messengers, child. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. I can't wait to have all of you home and safe again, child. And I said, Maranatha, God. So if you do have unrepentant sin, if you are not a child of God, then let me invite you into the kingdom. It is not my kingdom, it's God's. And so this is your ticket to heaven. Your ticket to heaven. You see it says admit one. That's because we can't get in by anybody else's Christianity. We have to accept Jesus as our Savior on our own. We can't just because your family member was saved. That does not get you into heaven. So your ticket to heaven. May I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it, and that's a good thing. Because you could never afford to buy it. It's free, but only because someone has already paid the ultimate price for it. God loves you, and not only wants you to have a fulfilling life on earth, He wants you to live with Him in heaven forever. He's the one who offers you a paid-in-full ticket. No one wants to go to hell where, where there will be no joy and no pleasures whatsoever. And God doesn't want anyone to go there either. The Bible says that God is not wishing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3, 9 But there is a problem with getting that free ticket. We have all done wrong. We have all sinned. We've been talking about that tonight. Unrepentant sin. Um haven't we? God's word says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. 1 John 1 8. Sin pollutes. It makes us unclean, unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes. It separates us from a sinless God. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6 23. We read that a while ago. I'm already getting confirmation. In short, our sinfulness blocks the delivery of the ticket that we need to get into heaven. So the next part says, who paid for it? Wait, there's good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born and to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous one for the unrighteous, all of us, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 When God laid on him the iniquity sins of all of us, Isaiah 53.6, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15.34 The answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took our place. He took your place and mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages our sins had earned. Then he rose from the dead, was seen by hundreds of people, is alive today so you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life, your ticket to heaven. That's right. The Bible says to all who did receive him, Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. So that is awesome. You can become a new person, born of God, to start a brand new life that pleases God. And of course, all God's children have a ticket to heaven. So the next part is, do you want it? It is no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven. God has made sure you can receive it. The whole issue is, did Jesus pay for all your sins or didn't he? God said he did. Trust God that it is so. Whosoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. John 3.36 Just as a man says, Yes, I will take this woman to be my wife, 
God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says whoever has the Son, Jesus, has life. 1 John 5, 12. If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like these. Okay, so this is a salvation prayer, and if you would like to receive salvation at this time, then receive, uh, repeat this after me. Sorry. Dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am so sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins, paid my debt in full, and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you. Thank you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So remember what John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? Do you have everlasting life like God said? So if you did pray this prayer and you did receive Je Jesus as your Savior and you did receive your ticket to heaven, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You have now been saved, sealed, and sanctified through God. I mean, by God, through Jesus, His Son. And uh, your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing. They're having a party. Because that's what happens when people get saved. And so this, I did not make up. This is a Crossway Good News track. So if you did receive Jesus, then spend some time in God's Word every day and pray and find you some praise and worship music and praise God and share with others share with others your newfound faith and so I think I've done everything that I came here to do if you have any verses that you can think of that you you know think went with the lesson that maybe I didn't find please put them in the comments if you come by and watch this please put your name in the comments I know on YouTube, I'm getting weird comments like, I don't even know what it means. And I just want you to say, hey, how you doing? Or, you know, anyway. Um, let me give you God's blessing out of numbers. And I'm going to pray and get out of here. And I don't know where my friend Josie is. She's probably out having, doing some things because it's Saturday. I hope she's having a great day. Okay, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So we all need some peace. All need a lot of peace. Anyway, it's been a great day today. And I enjoyed coming and talking to you about unrepentant sin. I'm going to try to be more aware of my unrepentant sin. 
Uh, but think about it. Think about the the uh, the image of the little kitten and the, or even the little puppy that grows up to be a ferocious dog. You know, um, sin is like that. It comes in as something so precious and so wonderful, but then it just grows, and before long, it dominates your life. Okay, well, I am going to pray and get off of here. So, God, we just come to you, and we just thank you, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for helping us understand your word, Holy Spirit. And we just thank you, Jesus, that you did die on the cross to offer us salvation and forgiveness, God, and grace. And uh, we just... Uh, we just pray that you would bless us with a, a good evening tonight and that you would just uh, you just help us to examine our hearts from time to time to see if there's anything there that needs to be repented of, that needs to be removed, God. We again pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. And we pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We also just pray for a good Sunday tomorrow to go and worship you and learn more about you, God, with our church family. And we just... Uh, we just thank you for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, I'm sorry I wasn't on here for very long. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If you got saved, please put your name in the comments. If you need prayer, put your name in the comments. I'd love to pray for you. I do have two set prayer times. And if you don't want me to pray over the internet, then I will pray for you in the mornings when I don't record anything. It's just my private time with God. That's when I take my notes. That's when I be still, when I get still before Him and listen to what He has to say. All right. Well, God bless you all and your families abundantly. And have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow awesome Lord's Day tomorrow and uh, much love <laughs> might I get me a sign because I'm just really not that good at that okay that's a heart much love and cyber hugs good night